Page 59, Love Somebody. On page 56 and page 57, they're introducing you to some new notes and a new position. Well, think about it logically, it makes sense. We've been in C position, remember that's where C is the bottom note. And there's a lot of C positions, but it's according to the notes in the music, we've been in this C position. G position is the same thing, except G is the bottom note. So G here, here. That's where it is. However, if you look at the written music, now we got new notes to learn. Because here is these, but in G position, you're here. These are different notes. And same thing in the bass clef. Well, drill yourself. That's what I'm saying. By now, you should know the these ten notes in the music very well. So you need to add four more in each cliff to get to, and it's up to uh, you drill yourself. Just go over them over and over and over and over. On page 57, they also talk about intervals in G position. I don't care what the position is. An interval is an interval. It's the di distance between two notes, any two notes, whatever. So you can do whatever you want to do there, but it's, it, here, there's just G, you're counting up from G. So it's here, that's an interval of a second. One, two. Or I go from here, it's one, two, three. All intervals work the same way. It doesn't matter what the position is or whatever, just, uh, You'll learn to recognize them in the music, and it helps in understanding the music theory and when we get into more chords, it helps. Because remember the C chord was here? And you have an interval of a third and an interval of a third on top of each other. You can guess what a G chord is. They're going to get to it. It's going to be here and an interval of here. That's a G chord. I mean, the, the, the music theory behind the chords works the same way. Just so you're aware of it. So let's look this piece over and see what's involved. It's two lines long. It's got a repeat sign. You're going to play it twice. Treble and bass clef, 4-4 four, four time. The dynamics, we got some different kind of F dash P. What's that about? We'll talk about it. Quarter notes, half notes, we can deal with all that. And we have multiple notes at a time going on here. Okay, we can deal with that too. However, since we have new notes to learn, I suggest we drill ourselves. So first, we forget the rhythm. We just play the note and we say the name of it. You need to know these instantly. So in the right hand, you're starting here. G position, say the note, the G you should know. It's a here, G, B, D, D, A, B, C, G, B, D, D, C, B, A, G, B. So just drill yourself on these. You don't have to go that fast. You think about it. No rhythm, you're just focusing on the note and saying the name of it. Don't read finger numbers. I prefer you cross out all these finger numbers except maybe the first one in the first line. That's all you need. In the left hand, well, you got more than one note at a time. So you're going to go here. Let's go do the bottom note first. C, D. That's a C and a D together. So C, D, and then a B, D, and then an A, D. So that's how you do chords and multiple notes. You start with the bottom note and say it, and then the next one on up. So you go through and do the drill on naming the notes. Then we'll go back and we'll add the rhythm in the right hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. For the left hand, well, you have these chords. You see in a D here, and then here and here. It's one, two. Three, four, it's the same rhythm as the right hand. You're just doing that. The bottom note's changing, the top note's the same. Okay, try putting the hands together. And when you do this originally, at first, you're just trying to get the hands to work together. These come together, and then these come together, and these come together. You take your time with it, and you just work on it. These, and then these, and then these. You can forget the rhythm if you need to. Just focus on getting the hands to work together. You can put in the rhythm later. One, two, three, four. It's not hard anyway, but the, getting the hands to work together can be a challenge. Because hmm. you've got different fingers going on at once. 
Then once we do that, we think about the articulation. Well, the articulation, right now the only articulation we have are the slurs. So connect these. I don't know why they don't give you slurs over the second measure. I'm going to tell you, connect the whole first line together. Pretend there's a great big long slur over the whole first line. And then lift up. Just look, like taking a breath and then put a slur over the whole second line. So, so just lift up at the end of the first line, like so. See, it's a little tricky because in the second measure you can do that. You can connect them. But these chords you can't. Can you connect one hand and not the other? On top of everything else you're doing? That's probably why they didn't put slurs over it, because you might have to. You do both hands the same? If you have to, you have to. But if you can, try connecting the right hand, even though you can't connect the left. So you just hold that down, and then the next one, and then the next one. It takes practice, but you're going to need to be able to do it eventually, so go for it. I don't know how much you're struggling to get this, but if you're getting it pretty well, by all means, do this now. It'll help you later on. And they're all done the same way on that. Then after the articulation, then I add the dynamics. The F dash P, well, let's talk about that. Anytime you see any dynamic, something dash something, you know you're going to play that part of the piece at least twice because the first dynamic applies to the first time you play it and the second dynamic applies to the second time you play it and a lot of music does this so here F is forte or loud P is piano or soft so you're gonna play it loud now that's the melody that's the right hand whatever you think loud is And then after you repeat it, because it's repeated, then you're going to play it soft. That's the melody. Everything else needs to be in the background. So when you're playing loud, you can play the left hand a little louder. Just keep it softer than the right hand. But when you're playing soft, how soft can you play the left hand? Don't play the right hand louder in order to be louder than the left hand. No, that's backwards. You play the right hand, the melody, where you need it. And you practice and learn to play everything else softer than that. However soft it is, it doesn't matter. I know it's hard to do. Can't help it. I'm a hard teacher. I'm a mean teacher. Right? This, is, this is the way I am. And that's the dynamics. Then speed, well, again, they don't give you a speed, they give you a mood, happily. And you have to figure out the speed from the mood. So if you're going to do this happily, to me, I associate happily or fun or whatever, in that, that idea, that mood, with moderately fast. And between medium and in fast, just sort of moderately fast. That's the flow of the piece. Two, one, two, three. That's my impression of it. You'll have to come up with your own happily, but you can start with that and then adjust it as you need to. Again, don't copy me. You, you make it yours. You play it as you see fit. Just don't violate whatever the music tells you to do. you, you got to follow the music and what it says for the most part. I'd like to play this with you slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do the dynamics. I'm going to play both hands about the same and I'm going to play it kind of a medium loud all the way through. Uh, we will play it twice. 
So I'll give us four counts and let's just go over it very slowly together. One, two, ready, go.